What are you looking at, butthead? So this is my review for the movie Unbroken. It just came out last weekend. Saw this with my family uh, over Christmas weekend. We were trying to decide on a movie. It's kind of up in the air between this and Mark Wahlberg's The Gambler. I'd heard not. I've heard some. I heard some negative things about The Gambler, so I decided to pick this. I figure everybody would like it, so we went to this. Had a lot of good, a lot of good buzz around it. Obviously, coming out right before Oscar season, so it's wanting to <clears throat> get in the race there for some awards. And it has some really good behind the lines people. Uh, it's for obvious reasons. It's pretty noticeable because it's Angelina Jolie's second movie that she's directed. Uh, she did a movie in 2011 called In the Land of Blood and Honey about the Bosnian War. That was her first feature film. I don't think it had as much buzz. I don't think that many people saw it. But which is okay. I mean, first effort. You gotta kind of get your legs under you, as they'd say. So this is her second effort. And also is the screenplay is written by the Coen brothers. So right away, right there, I'm like, okay, I'll see it. Coen brothers writing the screenplay. That's a very, very good thing. And then also uh, their cinematographer that works with them a lot, Roger Deakins. He's an amazing cinematographer, is also working on this. So right there you have some really good behind-the-lines people uh, right off the bat. And also stars a guy named Jack O'Connell, who most people probably don't know yet, but he is getting a lot of praise for a British movie. I don't even know if it's come out in the States yet. It's called Start Up. And so it's like a prison drama about him being incarcerated. And it was getting really, really good reviews from movie critics that have seen it for his performance. And the movie as a whole is supposed to be really good. So I was interested to see him in a movie. And this is a very popular story. My uncle was actually talking about the book uh, on Christmas when I was with family. He is reading the book and it's really, really popular. People like it. So the story is about, uh, excuse me, a man named Louis Zamperini. So he grew up, he's an Italian, Italian family, and he grew up and he was kind of uh, ostracized and picked on when he's younger. Eventually he goes and starts training as a runner, a sprinter, and he gets to the Olympics, the Berlin Olympics. And I don't think he medals or anything, but he has a very, very good performance. He has an amazing last lap and you know so he's really expected to do well in the next Olympics. Unfortunately of course we all know what happened after the Berlin Olympics. Uh, World War II broke out and so he enlisted and he's a pilot. Well not a pilot but he's on a uh, a bomber. I don't think I don't think it was a B-17. I think it was a B-25 Mitchell bomber. Anyways that's a specific. He's a bombardier though. He's not a pilot. He's a bombardier. And he's on a, a plane, gets kind of shot up. Eventually they're on a rescue mission. They're actually looking for other, another downed plane. And while they're out, their plane starts to go down. And, you know, they mentioned that their plane had maybe been stripped but, uh, for some parts here and there to put onto other planes. And so they were worried about its flyability, if it was actually going to make it beforehand. And, of course, that does happen. Their plane goes down in the ocean. They're in the Pacific, I should say. They're, I'm not sure if they're stationed in Hawaii or where. It's probably, a, I don't think it is Hawaii, but it's probably just a small island. But they're in the Pacific. And they go down in the ocean. And so he goes down uh, with a couple other crew members survive. And they're on a raft for 47 days. And then after that, they get found. But unfortunately, it's by the Japanese. And then he remains in a... Japanese prison camp for the remainder of the war and he gets pretty uh, harsh treatment uh, tortured in quite a bit so that's what it's about it's about his survival story so I guess um, like I had mentioned so Jack O'Connell is the actor that's playing Louis uh, he does a good job um, some of the other big actors that are in it are Domel, Domnell Gleeson he was in some of the Harry Potter movies. He was one of the older Weasleys. 
Uh, he was in Anna Karenina and a couple other things. He's kind of a he's one of those actors that it's kind of hard to spot because he always looks different. He kind of really disappears into a role. He's one of his. I think he's he's one of the pilots on Louis' plane that goes down, and his name's Phil. He survives for a while with him on the raft. And then there, another big name is uh, Garrett Hedlund. He is in Tron Legacy and Four Brothers, uh, Inside Lewin Davis. He's a good actor, and yeah, kind of like Donald Gleason. He also disappears into most of his roles. I like him. He's a really good actor. He has a smaller part as well. Fitzgerald. He's one of the soldiers in the prison camp in Japan. Uh, one of the only really other actors that I noticed was Jai Courtney, who was in one of the rec more recent Die Hard films, and he was in Spartacus, the TV show. But he was uh, also one of the members of Louis' flight crew. So those are the actors. For the story, uh, it started out pretty good, actually. I like the beginning. It shows him when he's a kid and he starts sprinting. And his older brother Pete is there to kind of coach him up and really tell him, you know, he has a very, um, very negative outlook on his, uh, about himself. And he just kind of wants to be left alone to be nothing is what he says. But then his brother kind of builds up his confidence, tells him that he can, he can do things if he really puts his, you know, mind into it and just works for it. And so, actually, I like seeing him run training when he's younger and then it shows him as... He gets older, and, and it's eventually Jack O'Connell playing him and running and getting the Olympics. And that. those parts are really good. And then uh, the parts that in the there's a couple of flights. You kind of see it's so it kind of goes back and forth between. I think it starts out right away with them flying, then it goes back to a flashback, and then kind of goes forward. There's a couple parts in the um, in the bomber that are really good. I liked it. Uh, the cinematography is really good there. And the story is very interesting. Unfortunately, it gets the story slows down quite a bit once the plane goes down, and they're on the raft. There's only three of them on it, and so yeah. After that, which happens relatively early, I'd say at least, if not before, halfway through the film is when the plane goes down. They're on the raft, and the rest of the movie is just pretty slow. Unfortunately. It felt a lot longer than it was, and it just—it's not a war. This is not a war movie, really. It's just more of a survival movie. It's one man's struggle to survive, and you know, it, it tries to be um, kind of uplifting and motivational to persevere and all that. It just—it doesn't really work, unfortunately. I think it's unfortunate because I know people love the book and. I think the book probably has a lot better message than what is eventually told in this film. Um, and the, and I was, so I was, I was really excited about, you know, like I would mentioned, the Coen brothers writing the script and uh, Roger Deakins being the cinematographer and everything is just mediocre. It's a, it's a decent film, you know, it's decently shot, but for having them as screenwriters, you know, there's nothing really in the dialogue or the visuals or you know the direction so I don't think there's just nothing spectacular about it I don't I would be extremely surprised if this ends up being nominated for anything in the Oscars I I don't think it should be I think it should be out of the race unfortunately um, you know it comes out at this time so it kind of expects that but I don't think it it will I don't think it deserves any nom nominations it is very very plain and it's not it's not exciting. It's just it's not very dramatic either. It's not very emotional. Um, I guess they actually cut out a part. There's in the story. There's a a little part about a uh, a duck <clears throat> that the soldiers in the prison camp look towards, and I guess there's like a very emotional element to that story. It's not in the movie, and I guess it'd be pretty sad if they added it in, but they took it out. So. Unfortunately, I'm not going to recommend it. I definitely wouldn't recommend seeing it in theater. Yeah, it's playing right now. I wouldn't pay to see it. It's it's a rent. Maybe later. I'm never going to watch it again. It's just not worth a watch. It's just kind of it's slow, slow pace. It's just very unmemorable. It's too bad. I, I like a lot of these actors I'd mentioned: Donald Gleason, Garrett Hedlund. They're not going to 
be negatively affected you know, by this movie at all. And hopefully Jack O'Connell, I want to see his other movie that I mentioned too. And I don't think their careers or anything are going to suffer. If anything, I, it might be a bit of a bad sign for Angelina Jolie that she just might not have, you know, the eye or the ability to be a great director. It's it's competent. It's It's, you know... There's nothing super bad about it, but it's not like a great movie. So, uh, my rating is a 2.75 out of 5. And it's like I said, I wouldn't recommend seeing it in theater. It's out there right now. But some of the movies that I thought for just movie connections, I thought of Rescue Dawn the most. Uh, it's a movie with Christian Bale about a pilot that goes down in Vietnam and is in a prison camp there. Very, very similar, but I think the movie's a lot more exciting. Uh, it's, that's a, uh, Werner Herzog movie. It's much, it's much more well acted and directed. It's more exciting. A Rescue Dawn is. If you're looking for sort of a similar feel to a movie, I'd I'd see that. The plane parts remind me of like, cause I watched this movie so much as a kid. A Memphis Bell. That's probably like one of my favorite World War, World War Two aerial movies dealing with you know bombers and planes. I love that movie because I watched it so much as a kid. I haven't actually seen. It. I know there's a lot from the actual 40s, 50s, older movies dealing with the aerial portion of World War II, but Memphis Bell is the one I always go back to. So those are two of the kind of movie connections I made. So that'll be it. Okay.